Defence Forces have just released footage they say shows the actions of their ground forces in Gaza over the last 24 hours. They say they've struck Hamas units, attempting to launch anti-tank missiles and mortar shells. Although they met resistance, they claim to be neutralising Hamas cells. But however compelling the combat footage, it's impossible to know how successful they're being in their attempt to destroy Hamas, nor to know the cost in civilian life of urban warfare in the congested streets of Gaza City. I completed a situation assessment. Last night, we have accomplished a phase in the war. We will continue to be strong and precise and hunt down every terrorist. The IDF released night vision footage of its tanks and armoured vehicles entering Gaza last night after mobile phone and internet had been cut so people couldn't inform Hamas fighters about the location of the Israeli columns. It also means they can't send pictures of the damage undoubtedly being wreaked on civilian infrastructure, not to mention those being killed. This was the neonatal ward at Shifa Hospital in Gaza City on Wednesday. Apart from the patients, thousands of civilians have sheltered there because under international law a hospital shouldn't be targeted. But the IDF says Hamas has its headquarters beneath the hospital, suggesting they might regard it as a legitimate target. We will soon continue to expose, like we exposed yesterday, Shifa Hospital. We will continue to expose more details on Hamas using the civilian population in Gaza, foreign and local. We will expose this soon. Fighter bombers carried out the most intense aerial bombardment to date. Israel says it killed the Hamas commander in charge of drones, paragliders and aerial defence and struck 150 underground targets in the northern Gaza Strip. The tunnels enable Hamas fighters to move around undetected, but some of the 229 Israeli hostages are also being held there, in danger of being killed by their own air force or by their captors in revenge. This evening, the hostage families demonstrated in Tel Aviv before their representatives met for the first time with the Israeli Prime Minister. Many are desperate for the ground invasion and bombing to stop. But tonight, the Israelis were bombarding Gaza again even as ground forces remained inside the Strip. Weakening Hamas, no doubt, but bringing more devastation and death to Gaza. And Lindsay joins me now from Sderot in Israel, close to the Gaza Strip. So, Lindsay, what's the latest there? Matt, we're less than a kilometre from the border with Gaza here in Sderot. All day what we've been hearing is fighter bombers going overhead. We've also heard artillery, uh, tank rounds, some small arms fire, and even at one point cruise missiles. In the last few minutes we've seen some rockets from Hamas, from Gaza, going overhead. They appear to be targeted on Tel Aviv. Now, most of those get um, you know, taken out by the Iron Dome system, but at least one did get through to Tel Aviv today and damaged the building. So you can see that this war is very much continuing and that Hamas have not been beaten yet. But of course, what we can see here is nothing compared to what is actually going on on the ground, where there is urban warfare. They're meeting resistance, and what we don't know is the terrible cost to ordinary civilians in Gaza because they cannot send out the pictures to show us because of the utter internet blackout. Now, surprisingly, Elon Musk has said that he's offered Starlink to the aid agencies there. That would be so important to them to be able to find out whether people were injured and what to do with them. I think it's very unlikely that the Israelis would agree to that. Lindsay, thanks very much indeed. Well, in the last few minutes, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has been speaking about what he called the second stage of the war. He reiterated the call for Gaza's civilian population to move to safe areas and said that those accusing Israel of war crimes are hypocrites. He also vowed to exert every effort to return the hostages taken by Hamas.
Now, as we've been hearing in the last couple of hours, Mr. Netanyahu met the families of some of those hostages. They've described Friday as the most terrible of all nights. Earlier, I spoke to Hadas Calderon, whose two children and ex-husband were abducted three weeks ago and whose mother and niece died during the attacks. The vigil for the hostages outside the Defence Ministry in Tel Aviv, here for almost three weeks. These faces weigh on the government more than Israel's friends or foes, urging restraint in the planning of war. Eretz Calderon turned 12 two days ago. Here he was with his family in happier times. With his sister and his father, both also missing. And here was Eretz taken by Hamas on that morning, filmed by one of his captors. His grandmother and cousin had already been killed in the attack. He spoke to his mother, Hadassah. There's a video of Eretz being taken away. Yes. You have not seen that yet? No, I don't want to see it. I will ever, never see it. Because it's too upsetting. It's too painful. Helpless. Helpless feelings. I can't see my, my little boy in this kind of situation. I, can't, I don't want even to imagine it. I don't think about it. I don't want to see any movies. I don't want nothing. I have to fight to bring them back. That's all. That's all I care. This is my fight. Last night, the Israeli army, the IDF, went into northern Gaza with their tanks and their troops. Mm -hmm. Are you worried that this invasion... Very much. I didn't sleep this night. I didn't sleep. I can't eat. I'm terrified. I'm because terrified. you think your children are going to be in much greater danger now? We are... All the, I think all the mom, all the families of uh, Osage are very frustrated, you know. It's not a time for army act. It's a time for solutions. It's a time for the agreement, to make agreement. Getting them back is, has to be the top priority. The top. That's it. After, they can make their war. So would you tell the Israeli government, the IDF, to have a ceasefire, to stop fighting? Of course. Ceasefire. Re uh, exchanging a prisoner, whatever. If Bibi Netanyahu is watching this broadcast, what would you say to him directly? Say, my children, please. I'm demanding it. I, you don't have the mandate. You don't have the mandate. To abandon our children and to sacrifice them for this war. I admire your strength. I don't have strength. I'm very weak, believe me. That's why I'm acting, because I'm weak. You come across as very strong. Because without my children, I'm nothing. So I have to be strong for them. I block my feelings because I have to act. So I'm like automatically like a robot. I block my feelings, otherwise I crashed. I block. And in the night, my good friends, Edna, you, sh you, sh you saw her, this good friend, she tell me, Every night you scream and cry like hell by, by sleeping. I don't remember. Late two days ago, Eris's birthday cake sits untouched, waiting for his return.